Welcome to the lab for MCH-115B. We, today we're going to be using the CMM machine to measure a part. Start by turning the machine on. The switch is located on the front edge of the console. Next we turn on the air supply, which is the valve on the floor in the back. And finally we're going to turn on the printer. Once the machine is on, we need to set the machine origin. We do that by moving the head to the top front left corner of the machine. First unlock all three axes. Move the head up gently and all the way to its limits. Then when it's all in place, we'll press the checkbox on the console switch. Once the origin has been set, the next thing we need to do is calibrate the probe. And the first thing we do here is we select the probe type, which is TTP, or Touch Trigger Probe. Then we remove the probe from the head, and we're going to bring the probe head down to touch the calibration ball. And you're going to line up the hole in the head so that it sits directly on top of the calibration sphere. This will let the machine know exactly where the sphere that we're going to measure in the next step is located. And you notice there that I hit the checkbox that's up on the probe. It's the same button as uh, would be on the console. There's a little checkbox in both places. You can use whichever one's more convenient. Okay, now we're ready to actually measure the qualification sphere, and we're going to come down and gently sample the, the uh, probe tip to the ball uh, in several places. We're going to go in a pattern up and around the sphere. Uh, I'm not sure why this seems to work better than going around in circles, but it does seem to work better. And we're going to do that at least three different angles on the sphere. And when we're done, we'll hit the checkbox to accept the measurement. Now, after we hit the checkbox, you'll see a screen come up on the console that will show the measurement error or its uncertainty as to the size and shape of the probe tip. Uh, you want to try and get that down to around a thousandth of an inch or even less if you can, but it doesn't always work that well. If it's much more than a thousandth of an inch, you want to cancel out of the measurement and redo the probe calibration. Once the uh, probe tip is calibrated, we're ready to start setting our datums. And the first datum, or datum A, is going to be the granite surface plate itself. And we're going to come through and just gently touch the probe to the granite surface plate in a number of places. Uh, use a kind of a zigzag pattern or a somewhat random pattern. If you just go around in a circle or a rectangular pattern, uh, it's liable to think you're measuring a circle or a rectangle and not the surface of the plate. Okay, uh, we've made the measurement. Now watch the sequence of button presses here. We're going to save the measurement, scroll down, and then at the top you'll see a button to make that measurement datum A. Okay, uh, now what you don't see here is I've locked the z-axis with the probe tip just a little bit below the edge of the reference frame, and we're going to sample along the x-axis which will become our B datum. So when we're done, we'll come over to the screen, select the measurement, and then go up and press the B datum button. Now we're ready to select the y-axis or C datum and just as before we're going to come up and we're sampling points along the y-axis
Okay, now we're going to accept the C data. So accept the measurement. Now we need to scroll up. Select the Relationships button at the top. Scroll back down. And now you'll see the button to select the C datum. Okay, now we're going to start measuring the holes. And uh, I like to sample the holes in the same order that they're numbered on the print. And as you're measuring the hole, try and go around the hole's uh, circumference in order. Don't zigzag back and forth or it can get a little confused about what it is it's measuring. Uh, after you sample around the uh, inside of the circle, take oh, probably at least six points or so, uh, then hit the checkbox. And what you should see is a picture of a hole in a block. If you don't see that picture, then it's decided it measured a rectangle or a plane or something. You can cancel the measurement and start over. Uh, if it looks okay, you can hit the hard copy button. Also check that the diameter and XY position look halfway reasonable. Okay, now that we've measured a couple holes, I'll show you the relationship button at the top. And as I press that, the screen toggles between showing you information about the hole you just measured or its relationship to some other feature, in this case the hole it measured just preceding. Shows distance, angle, information like that. Okay, at this point, I'm assuming that you've measured all the individual holes, and we can make a printout of the hole drawing with all the holes numbered with the numbers the CMM is assigned to them. So we started by hitting the Tools menu, scrolling down, hitting Part Drawing, and then pressing Print Top View. Okay, here we're back in our main Measurements menu, and I'm just showing you here how to print out information on a feature if you didn't get it printed out when you actually measured the feature to begin with. Uh, you'll see in the top there's a cursor that highlights to tell you which whole number you're on. And up in the top left, you'll see a little schematic of a part, and there'll be a little cursor blinking that shows you which hole is selected there. Uh, you can just select a uh, feature that you want to look at, and then you can see the data in the bottom screen, and uh, you can hit the hard copy button to get a printout of the screen you're looking at. Okay, so we're going to go back to our top menu then select Measurement, Tools, and Relationship. Now you'll see a screen where there's a list of the features that have been measured, and you can scroll through them, and you can see what feature you've selected both in the bottom list, and also up the top left in that little iconic view of the part, you'll see a crosshair moving back and forth over which holes you're referencing. In this case, we're measuring the distance between holes 1 and 2 in the print. When we hit the checkbox, you'll see on the bottom screen a measurement of the distance between them. Okay, what you're seeing here is that after I've made several measurements of relationships, the list of holes in the bottom keeps growing. But notice the icon next to the circle there. That's a relationship icon. To measure between two holes, you need to scroll up the list until you see just the hole icon. Don't try to measure between a measurement and a measurement. Go up and measure between a hole and a hole. Okay, now we're going to actually measure the bolt circle. And we start with the measurement menu, tools, construction, and then circle. After you've made those selections, now you can select the individual circles that make up the bolt circle. And after we hit the checkbox, you'll see a new feature appear on the chart. 
which is the bolt circle constructed to fit those three holes. Okay, hopefully that's enough information to get you started. Uh, there's an instruction manual laying on the table next to the machine. And as always, if you have any questions, by all means, uh, feel free to ask an instructor. Uh, hopefully you've learned a little bit about uh, the CMM and uh, about composite frames, which is sort of the point of this exercise.